Hi, I'm Rohit. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stealth. Today we have Ade with us. Hi, Rohit. Good to, good to see you, Ade. Uh, Ade is the co-founder and managing partner at Base 10 Partners. Uh, uh, Base 10, uh, before Base 10, Ade had a successful career as an entrepreneur and investor. Uh, so, and you were a ser serial entrepreneur, you started multiple companies. Uh, Ade was the co-founder and CEO of Twenty, the Spanish Facebook, which was acquired by Telefonica for 100 million in 2010. Then you co-founded Identified, AI for HR, which was acquired by Workday in 2014. And then you were a founding investor of Cabify, which is a billion dollar Latin American ride-sharing company. Uh, at Workday, you launched Workday Ventures, the, their first and uh, biggest applied AI and enterprise software fund. And you were also VP of technology and strategy there. You are originally from Spain and half Nigerian. Uh, you uh, did MBA from Stanford Graduate School of Business and uh, also a JD in law and MS in economics from Ikada University in Spain. Uh, you also studied machine learning at Stanford. <laughs> Uh, and now you volunteer, also volunteer at Code 2040, Code 2040 uh, that tries to create access, awareness, and opportunities for black and Latin engineering talent. That's correct. That's a lot of stuff. I know. <laughs> I, I have not been getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> Super busy. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, uh, why don't you start by telling us about Base 10? Uh, absolutely. So Base 10 is an early stage venture capital fund. Um, we invest in seed and series A companies mm -hmm. that are doing automation for a real economy. And what we mean by automation for a real economy is thinking how the largest and most old school, and we like to call them boring and unsexy, because right, right. we like that, yeah. uh, industries are going to change. Mm -hmm. um, and we always start with the people first, thinking mm -hmm. like, okay, so you know, agriculture, mm -hmm. like food storage, right. uh, immigration, like right. just things that people in San Francisco generally don't think that much about. <laughs> That's what yeah. we like. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and, and how long has Base 10 been around? Uh, this is our second year. Uh, we have been investing for two years. Got it. Uh, we started the fund two and a half years ago. Got it. Uh, and thus far, we have invested in 17 companies, mm -hmm. uh, including companies like Green, where I believe we have a yeah. connection. Uh, the Pill Club, uh, Virtual Kitchen Company, Wanolo, Reflective, uh, a few others. And uh, I like to, one of the stats that I like the most is that 55% uh, of our portfolio is outside the Bay Area, mm. uh, with 20% being in Latin America. Mm -hmm. So we, we are a global investor. Uh, and I think the as of today, 65, I know it's over 60% of our founders are minorities with mm -hmm. about 23% being underrepresented minorities. So we take a very global approach to problems that affect everyone. That's yeah. how I like to think about things. Yeah, totally. And you, uh, just to add there, wh where I know you led Grin's seed round. Uh, we talked to Jonathan uh, Louis, and uh, that's that's how I know <laughs> that you yeah. led their seed round. I didn't know that before. Uh, yeah, cool. they, they, they are a pleasure to work with. Yeah, Jonathan was uh, our very early investor, so I've known him for a long time now. That's fantastic. Uh, cool. Uh, let's talk about your background now. Uh, where So you are uh, Spanish and half Nigerian. Yes. So, so my, my full name is... Adeyemi Victor Ayao de Miguel, <laughs> uh, which I don't lead with yeah. here in, in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, I go by Ade. Um, uh, Adeyemi is a Yoruba name. Uh, mm -hmm. Yoruba is one of the three largest ethnicities in Nigeria. Got it. Um, I was born in Madrid, in mm -hmm. Spain. So my, my dad is Nigerian. Uh, my mom was a Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, they met on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had my early childhood in Nigeria, in Lagos, mm -hmm. uh, and when I was about six years old, moved to Europe, uh, and after a couple of years all over from right. Switzerland, Italy, etc., I ended up in southern Spain, in a place called Marbella, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the least place you will imagine a person working on technology right. will actually come yeah. from yeah uh but i is very very dear in my heart yeah. and that's essentially where i grew up um i went to college in madrid although couldn't couldn't really stay in a in a city for a long time right. so 
during college and ended up spending time in the US twice, in mm. Germany, in London. Um, and, and out of college started 20, as you mentioned before, uh, which was started in Madrid mm -hmm. and, and headquartered in Madrid. Uh, and moved to the US uh, 11 years ago, mm. after 20, uh, originally to study in the Stanford Business School. Uh, and you know, my, my reasoning really was, I'm glad 21 well, I want to do this again, <laughs> multiple times if possible. Yeah. This is the most fun thing there is. Yeah. Uh, the place to do it is Silicon Valley. Right. So I came here very starry eyed. Uh, right. This was 2008. Mm -hmm. So a, a very different Silicon Valley to, to yeah. now. Um, and the, you know, when thinking about going to business school, I, I remember immigration was part of it. I was thinking, okay, so basically I have three ways of, of getting in the air. Like one of them is I go and work for some company, right. but I don't want to work for a company. Right. I want to start my own thing. Number two is I get a tourist visa right. and I'm here for three months yeah. and that seems tight. Right. And then, oh, I can go to business school uh, yeah. and like I spend two years like meeting people yeah. and like thinking about business plan. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so that cost wasn't a factor. Stanford uh, is so not cheap. Th thankfully, I, I had an academic scholarship. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, from a foundation in Spain that awesome. cover all, all of my costs. Yeah. Uh, if not, I, it will have been hard. Uh, yeah. Because my, my company, my first company was not liquid then. Oh, okay. Uh, but thankfully, the stars align and the, the Ramon Areces Foundation funded me. Mm. Uh, and the Stanford experience ended up being everything that I wanted and more. I uh, ended up launching two companies out of that with two classmates. Okay. Uh, I'm making some incredible long lasting connections. Uh, I had my, my wedding last year and half uh, of my groomsmen were Stanford classmates. Oh, congratulations so, on the wedding. Thank yeah. you. Uh, awesome, that's, uh, that's quite a story across uh, many countries. Um, you, uh, so and how many languages you speak? You told me you, you speak quite a, quite a few languages. So, well, if I think that at this point, uh, none of the people in my life will say that I'm fluent on anything <laughs> because at this point, even my Spanish has yeah. gotten really bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when I was younger, uh, I used to dabble in Yoruba, uh, and German, uh, but these days uh, is some sort of a Spanglish. Okay. <laughs> every now and then in meetings, your Spanish comes out. <laughs> yeah, every now and then for sure. Yeah. And the worst is when I go back to Spain. Right. And and, I, and my English comes up. Yeah. And my Spanish friends are just like, yeah. you stop right there. Like, <laughs> never do that again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, so you, uh, you started your com When did you start 20? Uh, while I was in college. So I was 23, it was 2005. 2005, no one was doing a like technology in 2005 in the, the uh, in Spain and yeah. had to like trying to create a new Facebook. So how did that idea or thought came so, about So you? it was interesting. Uh, so I've been coding since I was a teenager, um, a big geek like yeah. all of us. And I had done, I don't know how many website projects, but mm. many. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them didn't work even for me. Right. Uh, and then um, one of my best friends from high school, mm -hmm. who, who was a cool kid, right. uh, <laughs> uh, was in, in event management while we were in college. Right. And he was organizing all these university like gatherings and, and parties and stuff. And I, I will only get invited because I was his friend. Yeah. Uh, and at some point he asked me to create a website mm -hmm. uh, so people could essentially RSVP. Right. Uh, and my initial idea that was actually not called 20, it was called Who is Who, mm -hmm. was around that. And because Spain, unlike the US, don't, doesn't have big campuses mm -hmm. where all the life happens, mm -hmm. uh, the campuses are in the city. Got it. And university life happens around these gatherings and events in the city. Right. I was like, you know, it would be cool if people could see. Mm -hmm. who are SVPs to events. That's basically what's going to tell me where I should go. Right. Because right. I want to go where like X, Y, and Z are going. Right. right. Uh, so that was iteration one of my website. And it was a total side thing for my friend, you know, events business and whatever. And then I, I did my exchange program in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to Emory mm -hmm. University in, in Atlanta. 
and uh, and this was so five and in October um, Facebook launched in campus in Halloween right and it took the Emory campus right. by storm and right. it was like oh my god and everyone I remember uh, people were like no 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 don't get my number add me on Facebook you know? <laughs> it's Facebook and yeah. and I remember seeing that I'm mean like oh my god this is a much better idea than, than RSVP. what I was thinking right. And it makes sense for the campus environment that exists here. Uh, so that's, and then I, I remember like Googling about Facebook and they shortly after, or, or, or they had, yes, I can't remember, right. they had closed their Excel round, which valued the company at $70 million. Right. And right. I was like, $70 million? <laughs> A website can be worth $70 million, that's right. crazy. <laughs> uh, so I remember coming back to Spain and yeah. And telling all my teachers, yeah. uh, hey, like, I want to this website and it's going to be like a great company. It's like this thing called Facebook, but like it's different because, you know, it's Spain and like we're going to adapt it to here. And I have this and everyone was like, what, what are you talking about? Right. So I started asking for money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in I my friend uh, that did event, Felix, and. Uh, and my friend Joaquin, who is a much better engineer than, than I ever was, right. <laughs> joined the project. Yeah. And and we, we together, I think we were able to put together like $20,000. Um, and with that, we got started. Uh, $20,000 in 2005 in Spain. Yeah. Okay. No, it, yeah. Was, it was quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we, you know, soon that wasn't enough. Uh, yeah. So we, we started begging for money to people. Yeah. And the reaction of most Spanish investors was quite amazing. I was say, mm. wait, so you're doing a, a website yeah. for students yeah. and you're asking me for money because you want to have an office? <laughs> How, why do you need an office you're on a website? And yeah. I was like, well, there is this thing called Facebook <laughs> that is worth $70 million. And right. we're like, ah, that's, that's a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so that was a step one, which was difficult. Yeah. On top of that, one of the problems was that because there was really not a lot of examples in Spain of, mm -hmm. of this, most of the basic questions that you get here, like I, I remember a time I came here trying mm -hmm. to recruit people and, and and they were like, oh, you should like get a product manager. And I was like, what's a product manager? And I'm like, a PM. I'm like, yeah. oh, what's that? Yeah. And then the role got explained to me like, oh my God, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should have that. that People do that like yeah. full time. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so the lack of knowledge was yeah. another issue, um, yeah. and the Spanish law, unfortunately, to this day, is quite bad in hmm. anything uh, from hiring people to being able to give a stock options. To there is a lot of things that right. are backwards, mm -hmm. honestly, here, uh, and. You know, obviously, 20 was very successful and it was life changing for us. And I'll always be super thankful, but it really solidified in me the I need to go and do this in Silicon Valley. Right. Where I'm going to have all these resources, yeah. yes, around the corner. Yeah. And, you know, that's what got me to come here. And, and Spain lost a potentially really good entrepreneur to Silicon Valley well, because of the I, culture. I, I, you know, I am still very engaged with the with the Spanish entrepreneurial ecosystem. I like to say that is fifty times better than when we started twenty, right, right, which is right. very good to see. Yeah, it needs to be fifty times better <laughs> than it is today. Yeah, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I guess like uh, um, it's already not in Spain, but a lot of companies are having starting offices in France. Yeah, and I think it's going to just. Um, uh, people are going to know about these things and that's how it's going to exactly uh, it's going to happen there too uh cool so uh you you were in school you started 20 uh uh when did you decide uh, when did you uh stop working on it full time uh and decided to move to the US 2008 2008 yeah. so you are like okay now i have a pm yeah, <laughs> now yeah, yeah. i can i can do better things and you decided to come to stanford ah uh, yep and what did you see so went to graduate uh, business school, but did you focus on entrepreneurship or uh, just the general? I, I was very focused on starting another company since day okay. one. Okay, okay. so you came to Stanford and st you start looking for ideas or, uh, and stuff yeah. like that, and you started. And, and, and it's right, like, yeah, no, you, you move here as mm -hmm. well. And like, 
is an incredible experience. Like you get there, I mean, I could take you to my undergrad university in Madrid. It looks nothing like a Stanford. <laughs> like yeah. e our athletic facilities were like this room. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we I remember we had a computer lab that had, I think, 15 computers mm. for the entire university. Mm. Uh, so when you like, go down Palm Avenue yeah. and like see all these and it's like oh the gates computer center yeah, and you're like yeah. oh my god uh so i was like a kid on a candy store yeah, yeah. just like being able to meet everyone and uh it, it yeah it, it was i remember that very very fondly yeah, interesting and you moved here on f1 visa uh, i moved here on f1 visa and uh how did the let's just quickly talk about the the visa journey that you went through so you came to stanford an f1 visa and then what you did um, after that. Yeah, I I remember that the, you know, the first actually trouble with, mm -hmm. with Visa came precisely because of how I was going to pay for yeah. my MBA. Right. Because I, if I remember correctly, and you might be more, more uh, current than me on this, you actually have to give a proof of funds. Yes. Uh, in order to like get the visa yes. or something, yeah, yeah. which I didn't have. Yeah. Uh, and I was waiting for my scholarship yeah. to like get announced and then get, and then explain to the foundation that I needed right. the letter of funds from the bank mm. so I could get my visa. And I remember that process has been incredibly frustrating. Right. Uh, even before I arrived here. Yeah. Um, what was interesting is that I started identifying while I was in Stanford, hmm. so my second year. Hmm. Uh, and I incorporated the company, I started hiring people, all Americans. Yeah. Uh, and then I realized I couldn't work in the company. Yes. <laughs> I was about to ask how. And, how and I was like, oh, it's interesting. Yeah. So I can start this, Yes. but I cannot work on it. Yes, you cannot get paid. So I cannot yeah. get paid. So I'm like, that's, that's inconvenient. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, it, it was hard. I basically had to, so I knew that right after Stanford, the F1, I had the OPT mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. but the OPT period is not designed to like work full time in your startup. So right, right. something you can do. Right. Uh, so that didn't work for me. And what I needed to do is do a separate H1B mm -hmm. visa application, mm -hmm. uh, in order to hire myself right. in my company. Yes. But I don't know how it works right now. Yeah. I remember that back then there were very specific requirements such as, oh, your role has to match the skill set that you studied for in the U.S. Still and we need to post your job in newspapers yes. before a third number of time before you come in here. I'm like, wait a minute here. So... <laughs> I'm, I, I founded the company. I do everything. Yeah. I like code, I design, I find race, I, I do all these things. Yeah. But I cannot be hired for that. I have yeah. to be hired for something related to my MBA. Yes. And I have to publicize my job. Right. Before I can hire myself. Yes. To my company. <laughs> and pay myself. In which I cannot work. Yeah. Like this is getting really confusing. Right. Uh, and I have a minimum salary that is way too high. Yes. For what my company can pay me. Yes. I'm like, ah, this is a headache. And yeah. thankfully, Stanford had good resources. Yes. And uh, through the Bechtel International Center, I got connected to, to a lawyer, Malcolm, that's mm -hmm. still my immigration lawyer to this day, yeah. uh, who helped me navigate that process. And I ended up with an H-1B right. being hired by my own company. Yes. And the process was so painful and also so isolating in the sense that at that time, and identified everyone else was American. Yes. So no one could understand why I was spending so much time and energy yeah. on this. And the uncertainty of, I literally don't know if I'm going to be able to work on my company. Yeah. And I don't know if I have to move back to Spain. Like, yeah. this, is, this is awful. Uh, and, and I didn't really had friends in the same situation, hmm. uh, there was no like you know community yep. or plug and play plan of hey here you are, uh, which is why I think what you're doing is yeah. it's like really really useful and I wish I had had that resource back then. Uh, 
And right as, you know, the process was finished, which took a lot, uh, immediately, um, I, my lawyer told me, hey, like, you know, your company has been sold, like, it's been a big success, like, you have started another company, you might qualify uh, for this alien of extraordinary ability yes. section. I was like, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> that sounds like Superman. Yeah. Like, yeah. The alien of extraordinary ability. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, like, it's the process we have for, like, people that, you know, have had, like, accomplishments in their field uh, that we want in this country. So, like, I was like, oh, that, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, it has a really weird name, but... <laughs> If it's helpful, yeah. please yes. yes. Uh, so then I immediately started that process, and yeah. I believe a year later mm. I was granted my my green card. Damn, uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's actually one hundred percent the same story as us, uh, <laughs> as as me and my co-founder. We just went to Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 all uh, super similar. We came here on F one, uh, then went to H one B. Uh, then got O1, which is uh, Alien of Extraordinary Ability, uh, and then got our green cards. Otherwise, yeah. uh, for Indian uh, citizens uh, or people of Indian nationality, uh, it takes an average 15 years to wow. move from H1B to green card because the queue is so long. And and the, the, the quota system is by... Uh, country, it's not by number of people in that country. Mm. Uh, so India has like 1.2 billion people, yeah, and many yeah. come here, or like a portion of them come here. And uh, but the quota system just says we are going to divide it equally amongst all countries. Yeah. Right. So Macedonia, with a million people, has the same quota as India as 1.2 billion people. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, how, we we are at 40 in Spain, so we're closer to Macedonia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky in that sense, but yeah, that is. Uh, that is painful. No, uh, that's that's awesome. Um, and uh, then you sold identified and sort of uh, that worked successfully the second time. Uh, uh, yeah, time. I was super lucky to you know work with an amazing team and identified many of which. Uh, I actually, my head of engineering mm -hmm. is now running her company that we okay. are investors in. Yeah. Uh, and great friendships have have come from that. So. And, and you have stayed always in the Bay Area. I've always been in the Bay Area. Yeah, I have, you know, continued to every opportunity I had travel uh, because I, I spent some of my fondest memories by discovering new places. Yeah. Um, and my my wife uh, is also of mixed ethnicity. Mm -hmm. She's Greek American. Okay. Uh, so we both uh, Hang has spent a lot of time abroad right. and 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 grew up in a in a village similar to mine of eight hundred people. Uh, so we both love that. The problem with California is far away. Yeah, yeah. It's far away from everything. It's yeah. expensive. So. Yeah, uh, and like uh, it's uh, it's actually. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, people stay away from their families, and if they have to go meet them, it's like a whole thing. You have to take a vacation, and, and yeah. you have to make a trip out of it. Otherwise, you just can't go over the weekend and come back. Yeah, that is the hardest part of being here. Like the, you know, and I know India is the same way, but uh, definitely Spain, Greece, Nigeria are places of very strong community mm -hmm. and family connection. Mm -hmm. uh, much more than here, mm -hmm. honestly, and um, and they are very far away. Yeah. And the combination of that, uh, I remember once I left the the very nurturing community that the Stanford Business School is, mm -hmm. and I had my first year in San Francisco running Identified, mm -hmm. feeling very, very, very isolated. Right. And very like, oh wow, this is, I am working. As hard as I was working on twenty, but the right. big differences. Yeah, and, there is some this. And how did you sort of build that community? Because uh, uh, one of the challenges a lot of immigrants face when they move to the U.S. is they don't know anyone. Yeah, they have to start from scratch. Like uh, all your family, your friends, your networks, your community is back. Uh, in your home country, and you have to basically build a new life here. So my, the the luckiest thing for me was Stanford, mm -hmm. and like that that about half of my classmates stayed on the Bay Area, mm -hmm. uh, or half for a third, but a lot. Uh, yeah, and that immediately gives you a cushion of like people, um, 
and 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 then my my other two ways of building that is there there is a little Spanish mafia, <laughs> not, not as big as the Indian mafia, yeah. but but you know uh, making yeah. noise yeah. Uh, in Silicon Valley yeah. and and getting are, bigger, <laughs> getting bigger, and we are also culturally similar to Latin Americans mm -hmm. uh, uh, like Sergio yep. and and half of Ion, yeah. uh, so. Uh, I made a number of connections through that, mm -hmm. and and now it has been eleven years, right. and I'm married, so it's different. Like now, you know, I do have a community here, right. but it takes a while, and it's lonely, and I think it's one of the things that is not necessarily talked about mm -hmm. that much, uh, or shared and understood by non-immigrant founders. That's that's one hundred percent correct. And many people are just like, why? What what does it mean? Why are you? Why can't you be citizen for fifteen years? <laughs> like, uh, what's what's happening here? Yeah, it's it's a completely whole new uh, world for them. Yeah. Uh, and so is uh, just wanted to quickly touch upon like the the credit systems uh, of the U.S. because that's also something that it's pretty strongly needed in the U.S. compared to Spain and India yep. um, as international students moving here for the first time or first time uh, professional workers, you have to start building credit for for many years before you are uh, seen as one of the qualified yep, 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 <laughs> people yep. who's going to who's going to pay back the money, even though you have done a lot of stuff uh, uh, successfully in your in your previous life and yep. you've jumped through so many hoops to come to the US and you you have come here to make a better life for yourselves and and uh, achieve success but still like you are kind of shut out of the system yeah. did you have any experiences uh, yeah like this? the, the I'm, I'm sure it will be very similar to yours yeah. first I didn't understand it <laughs> like I was like, what is this FICO thing? Yeah, like yeah. FICO score is yeah. now thinking back on it, it sounds like a Black Mirror like, episode, yeah. right? Like you know, you're ranked by yeah. everything. And I'm like, okay, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, Stanford had a credit union yeah. that you know gave gave us a, a credit card, mm. which was modest. And the first time it became a hurdle was when I moved to San Francisco mm. and I had to rent an apartment. Yeah, and we're like, well. You have to pay twelve months up front. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I, I I do not. <laughs> like that doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. And I was very lucky that uh, I had two American roommates. Yes. That one one of them signed for me mm -hmm. as you know co-signer. Yeah. Co-signer. So, but man, it, it it took a while. And then I am the kind of person that as a founder, I just mostly focus on my work yeah yeah and i i don't want to deal with the details yeah. of my personal life. i just i can't i i and in fact for the credit is awful because i'm the kind of person that if i get a bill in the mail i will not look at it for like six months right. because i'm so in the clouds like yeah i just can't so i was like ah it's going to be a disaster <laughs> um until I, I got a, an accounting firm, actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of Stanford uh, to entrepreneurs uh, who are awesome. And they began helping me with how do you build credit and like how do you file use taxes and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, I was talking to John Collison once um, uh, at Y Combinator, and he even though he started Stripe and now $20 billion company, when he, even after he started Stripe and raised money, he was not able to get a credit card yeah, that he wanted. And that he was like, he just couldn't understand that. No, because that it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like the, 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 they are several, I, I always say that my top three things that yeah. have been more difficult to understand in the US and that to this day, I still don't have a clear picture of them. Yeah. Um, Number one is all the measurement system, which yeah. is still doesn't make sense to me. Number two is the credit system. Number yeah. three is the healthcare system. Yeah. <laughs> like there are three things that I constantly get confused yeah. about. And at this point, my wife has kind of given up on me. <laughs> I mean, like, I will just take care of that for us. Yes. Because you are useless yes. and incapable. <laughs> Uh, or dealing with the U.S. system, uh, interesting. And so you gotta find a lot of companies that that will uh, fix this system for everyone. That's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So so you now uh, so you went to Workday. You sold Identify to Workday, and you started their first venture 
arm Correct. of sorts. How did that come about? And then just take us through doing that to base 10. Uh, absolutely. So um, in parallel to running Identified, um, I had helped start another company called Cabify, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't run, but I incubated mm -hmm. uh, and was a founding investor. Um, and together with that, I also started investing in other mm. companies. And I did uh, above 50 personal investments. Five zero. Five zero. Mm. Uh, with the process of 20 of mm -hmm. my first company, Mosi. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I really enjoyed it. Like basically the, the next big thing right. to uh, starting a company is helping yeah. someone mm -hmm. start their company. Uh, and I'm a zero to one person. Right. Like I, one of the things I realized through my entrepreneurial career is when the company gets above 10 people, I stop being the right CEO. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. not that person. Yeah. I'm not good at building systems or like dealing with HR. Right. Or like, not me. Right. I am like more like, okay, how do we get something from nothing? <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I do think I, I can add value to others when it comes to that how do we start something from nothing? Right. Because I've been in the trenches so yeah. much and yeah. I've felt the pain so deeply. Uh, so um, when I, when I was so identified to work there, I was like, well, it's a big company. Like, you know, I don't know if this is for me. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you see a lot of entrepreneurs that sell their company, they last six months. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's very normal. Yeah. And um, Workday was incredibly grateful and supportive to me. Uh, and when I expressed that I had an interest in investing mm -hmm. and that I might want to dedicate myself fully to that, mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it was a very open conversation with Workday around, oh, actually we have been engaging with a number of early companies and you know Workday was growing and, and doing very well and changing very rapidly. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, we, we, with the support of, of other members of the executive team, we presented to the board a plan uh, for me to start and run uh, their first corporate venture fund with the aim mm -hmm. of saving other companies in the ecosystem, acquire some of them, working closely with them. Right. Uh, so it allowed me to do that, and it was a blast. Uh, we invested in 10 companies, mm -hmm. um, and in the first one of them, actually, was a company called Jobber, which mm. was a mobile app for finding jobs yep. that got sold to Monster. Mm -hmm. And the founder and CEO was my now based in co-founder. Oh, so that investment yeah. ended up turning in a partner for me, yeah. uh, which was great beyond the return. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a little bit of the, the transition. And you know, at some point, I ended up st staying at Workday for over two years mm -hmm. with World Adventures. Instead of six months. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and I, again, like I, I cannot be more of a fan yeah. of Workday and the, the company's performance I speak on itself. Right. But I just have so many friends here. Yep. Uh, that, you know, like, be, because for, for a company at that stage, uh, we were the first company they bought hmm. uh, as, as a public company. And they, I'm, I'm such a recognizably weird entrepreneur that they could have been like, we don't know what to do with right, this person. Right. <laughs> uh, and instead, like, they gave me that platform. Yeah. And uh, it was a great experience. Uh, for me, it really came the time where I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to become an investor, I need to do it on my own way. Yep. And as excited as I am by the intersection of AI and enterprise software, mm -hmm. um, where I really see a gap, is in this automation for a real economy hmm. trend. And I had investor on a number of companies mm -hmm. like Cabify, like Instacart, like Rappi, like 99 Taxes, mm -hmm. like Shipbob, like mm -hmm. Homejoy, mm -hmm. that were very much in this trend, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going after like food delivery and transportation and logistics and home cleaning. Uh, that I was like, I just think that is going to happen in every single industry. Yeah, yeah. And if you build a firm that is completely focused on that, you can achieve so much. So TJ thought the same. And thankfully, he is a better investor than I am because he came from firms like Excel and Kotu. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got together early 2017. Yeah. And, and here we are. 
Rappo. Uh, uh, funny thing there in all the companies, Rappi was in our batch. That's when awesome. We were 16. That is so awesome. we know Simon and his co-founder, I forget. Sebas. Sebas, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so they were in our batch and they joined late and, and we were, my co-founder uh, worked with them for some engineering talent also. That is awesome. yeah, like, uh, I, I, I have the, the best uh, Rappi story. I, how I got introduced to them, it was before they joined YC. Oh, okay. Uh, so I invested pre-YC. Damn, yeah. They, um, the, the, the investor in question that I will not name reached out to me and was like, hey, I think there are some guys here from your country. <laughs> uh, you, should, you should meet them. I think it's yeah. the kind of stuff you like yeah. because you're an Instacart. Yeah. And then I, I meet Sebas. I'm like, he, he, he's Colombian. Yeah. Like, I'm a Spanish. <laughs> there is like an ocean <laughs> in between. Yeah. But similar enough, yeah. and I actually really like the company, so yeah. I'm investing anyway. Yeah. Um, uh. Uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, no, uh, Simon and and Shivas are, are are great. They're they're awesome. Uh, and now they uh, as, uh, they recently raised like a billion dollars from SoftBank. Yeah, 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 yeah. That uh, is going to be very good for the Latam ecosystem. Yeah, um, and so was ninety nine rights. I think yep. Didi bought it for a billion dollars. Exactly. And, like uh, I think though, as those companies become big, yeah, uh, it's just gonna spur you know, a lot the, more. The, there innovation. is. I was recently talking with. Uh, there is a fund down in Latam called Monashis that we yeah. work with yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, and I co-invested with them in Rappi and in ninety nine and in Green actually. Right. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, the founder, Eric, um, was last week at, at our annual meeting and he mentioned something that really spoke to me, which was um, in all the ecosystems, including the U.S., uh, there is a big milestone mm -hmm. in getting your first billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. Once you do, the acceleration of more billion dollar companies and then your first $10 million company is a lot higher. Yeah. And you see that. Right? Yeah. Didi happened. I mean, yeah. 99 happened with Didi. Yeah. Yeah. And right after that, you had Cabify hit a billion and a half. Yeah. Uh, you have Rappi. Uh, you have Green. Uh, you have companies like Love or like Logi mm -hmm. uh, or like Jim Pass. It's very real. It's yeah. very real. And I mean, New Bank is... is New Bank. Bank. David, uh, yeah. another good friend from Stanford. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's, he's talking about the man. That guy is the man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, no, that's awesome. And, and I think like all these ecosystems, including Africa, like there are a lot of uh, uh, companies from Africa and YC that go back. And it's just, I think it, you see more of entrepreneurs trying to just also bring up the ecosystem instead of just working on their company. So they yeah. also try to help everyone else either start companies or uh, with engineering talent or something like that. Uh, anything they can do to bring everyone, move everyone forward together. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, so, so you started Base Ten uh, uh, two and a half years ago, and you invest in seventeen companies. Correct. Let's talk about a couple of them. Uh, not your favorite one, so so we we won't uh, 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 pick based on your favorites. We'll just pick any two that you want to talk about and uh, give us a sense of how you ended up investing in them. And uh, what do you generally look for founders so, as yeah. a so so I, extension I, to that? Um, basically, to talking about our process first, we are a very, very thematic driven investor. Mm -hmm. What that means is we will pick a theme, mm -hmm. let's say logistics, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll go deep mm -hmm. into what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, because logistics is many things, like mm -hmm. warehousing, it's like cold food storage, mm -hmm. it's like freight, it's mm -hmm. like many, many things. Um, so we'll do a lot of analysis of like what is happening in those markets, how are corporates changing, like we'll talk to public analysts, private equity firms, uh, flex sports of the world, mm -hmm. companies like that. And then we'll pay a lot of attention to what has happened in other areas of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will take that uh, and we'll apply to, okay, then how do we think the next batch of great companies in that in that area is going to uh, develop. Right. Uh, so, for example, following our work in shipping and logistics, mm -hmm. uh, the first two companies we invested on in the theme are a company called Shipwell, based in Austin, mm -hmm. which 
the this a bad way of describing it, but it's essentially flexport for trucks. Okay. Uh, and then another one in Atlanta called Roadsing, which is doing payments for truckers. Interesting. Uh, or how Robin likes to put it, uh, is square cash for the trucking and logistics industry. Got it. Uh, and so we go, we start theme first. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to the entrepreneur, and this is true both for Greg and Jason at Chipwell and for Robin at Roadsing, we look for people that actually have felt the pain mm -hmm. that they're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they all have a lot of experience in the logistics industry. Uh, cool. So, so you have invested. Uh, uh, you are investing in AI for the real, real economy. As you meet a lot of uh, sort of founders, and and you've yourselves moved across multiple countries. Uh, what uh, what advice would you give uh, to immigrants moving to the U.S. or uh, generally to founders who are looking to start companies anywhere in the world? Yeah, I, I starting with the first one. I think we we touch on on two of them. But number one. Uh, try to get to a place, a resource mm -hmm. that has information to you because it is very complex yep. and it is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more like the more info you can get ahead of time, the better. Yep. Uh, number two, the community aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, people don't talk about that, but it's isolating, it's frustrating, and it really helps you hear the story of, oh, you have gone through exactly the same one you have made, so you yep. need to hear that. Yeah. Uh, and all over the world, um, what I will say is, I think I have picked the wrong time to be an investor uh, <laughs> because this is a super exciting time to be a founder. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the if you look at the companies of the 90s and of the early 2000s, they're software companies, mm -hmm. like large and from software companies. And then if you look at the companies that started in like 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. and more recently, mm -hmm. globally, mm -hmm. you have the Rappies, the 99 Taxes, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, the Meetwans, the Gojeks, the Grabs, that are not only software companies, they are touching the real assets. Yes. And that is super exciting. Uh, and that is not necessarily a technology first problem mm -hmm. is yes a problem yes. like people in sao paulo yeah cannot travel by car yeah because you cannot fit one more car on those streets. yes yes you just can't yeah it's just true yeah so that needs to be solved yeah and that is a huge and very rewarding problem to solve for everyone who lives in sao paulo so being that kind of entrepreneur mm -hmm. you know that is no longer oh i'm going to do a, a cool app or yeah, a cool yeah. program is yeah. like no like i'm going to figure out how like farmers get yeah. the food to the consumer right and if i look at it today man like in some countries it hasn't changed since the middle ages yeah yeah literally yeah um uh, and there is a lot to learn from like uber and yeah. from flexport on like how you take that and you use it there so i think that's super exciting and i think focusing on problems like that uh Cool. Uh, that's that's a good note to end the interview. Thanks for taking the time and Thanks talking to, you. to us. Thanks uh, for uh, This is our most international founder <laughs> investor <laughs> interview. Uh, so uh, appreciate appreciate all your thoughts. Thanks a lot, and thanks for having me. Good. Thanks, Ade.